everybody welcome to a new episode here on my channel crafty cassie i am cassie here the host on the with it podcast this is season two episode two um it's been a long time since i've recorded a podcast and i'm kind of just starting over because when i recorded that episode the, the first episode that was i hate to say this but that was recorded over a year ago and a lot has happened since then, and projects have been completed, and um, I just, a lot has happened here on the personal side that I just kind of needed to take a break. Uh, one of those things being that my computer, my laptop that had my editing software, was blown up in a windstorm that we had here. It caused a power surge in the middle of the night and uh, we lost power for about 12 hours and so I lost my laptop and so it took me a hot minute to get new uh, to have the money to buy new editing software to put it on my desktop um, that's now been fixed as you have noticed um, that this isn't my only video that I've posted on my channel or over on my beauty channel um, I've got several other videos that I am currently editing um, and I've got lots of ideas to continue to uh, record and post for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and get into some finished objects. Um, I don't have very many to show you. I do have the ones that are readily available right in front of my fingertips. I'm going to start with the ones that are more um, fiber related rather than say um, other crafting related but all finished projects are going to be discussed here first so my first finished project I have are these guys and they are um, knit washcloths uh, I knit there's five of them here that are completed I have several others that I have ends I need to sew in um, so I'll show you those as I get the ends sewn in um, so there's this one with the yellow and the pastel multi-tonal. There's this one with the yellow and the um, almost, I guess you could say it's nautical, kind of. Um, red, yellow, and white. Um, now why I say that's more nautical, because most people think of, when they think of the colors nautical, they think of like, um, like, red and, or black and white striped shirts and little red scarves and you know gold anchors and things like that I think of that as nautical because those are the colors of the Navy um, for those of you who don't know uh, the US Navy's colors are Navy gold and white um, and so those are why I think of those as the nautical colors um, I have an, a solid peachy one here and this one's a bit different so most of these that I've got finished here are peaches and cream cotton yarn um, in fact I have an entire cone of this one here um, but this one this tan one here is actually for a gift for a friend um, and I've got several others uh, as a set uh, to give to my friend. She loves the beach so I chose kind of some very nice um, soft beachy colors so I've got like a couple tones of brown I think. I've got a blue, a green, like a mint color, um, a gray. Um, there's five colors in total but so this one is actually knit out of I Love This Cotton by Hobby Lobby and uh, so I'll be setting these all up in a set for her and I think I'm gonna make uh, with my husband some homemade hand soap um, for her as well and give that to her because she loves kind of that you know very basic um, bathroom set and I like to make things and I know she'll really appreciate that kind of thing so that's why uh, and she actually was the reason why I went down this rabbit hole because I wanted to make these for her birthday and her birthday was at the beginning of July <laughs> oops <laughs> it's July 3rd and it is the beginning of August so yeah and then this is another one that'll be going with it 
um, more of this I love this cotton and this is the mint green I was talking about just real soft and pretty and um, they have a slight luster and they'll really go well together especially once I have the um, other colors done as well and um, the rest I'll probably just keep as washcloths for my babies um, that is something that has changed around here um, shortly after I recorded my last episode about a couple months later I found out I was pregnant and then three days later I found out I was pregnant with twins so now I have because it's I've given birth that happened in May and uh, so now they're gonna be three months old in a couple of days uh, of this being recorded and um, I have identical twin girls by the name of Adelaide and Francesca Jo. Um, both of our daughters are named after grandmothers, mine and my husband's grandmothers. So they're great grandmothers. Um, Adelaide has a middle name and it is Anez. Um, that is her grandmother's um, middle name and then, or great grandmother's middle name and then her grandmother, my husband's mother, legally does not have a middle name but she's baptized Catholic, so of course she was given a middle name. Um, and so her Catholic middle name is Inez as well. So Adelaide has um, her great-grandmother, grandmother's middle name. And then Francesca Jo is named after my grandmother, who didn't have a middle name. Um, her name was actually Nancy Jo. So um, one of the big things that my family likes to say is that you know, every child deserves their own name, and so um, usually the boys um, get their father's middle name uh, as their name. Um, but my husband was named after his grandfather's, so we passed on that middle name tradition and named their girls after their great grandmothers. Um, both women were very important to both. Um, respectively to us so um, you know I spent a lot of time with my Nana growing up and um, my husband um, lived with his mom and his grandparents so and his grandmother was a big influence on his life too so it was really important to us to honor our family traditions in that way when we um, were picking names for our for our babies we had boys names picked out but we're actually gonna be saving those if we decide to have a second pregnancy um, because he really wants a boy but now that the girls are here he's kind of like you know this is a lot of work what happens if we end up with another set of twins uh, as cute as my girls are I don't know if I want another set of twins <laughs> to be honest with you I could do it if I had another if I had a second pregnancy that was a singleton it was just a single baby great I do it I you know sign me up in four years from now let's do this um, we want to get the girls in school before we consider a, another pregnancy so uh, not that this was hard on me at all my pregnancy was super easy it's just that it's expensive <laughs> and having to put you know three kids in daycare I, I, I couldn't work I had to be a stay-at-home mom we couldn't afford to put all three kids in daycare at all. I, I, that's the main reason why we want to wait to have the girls in school full time before we think about uh, having another baby slash pregnancy. So, all right, the next object we're gonna be moving on. Um, let me go grab it because I left it on the table out in the living room, or out on the dining room table. That's right. So. Alright, so my f next finished item that I grabbed involves this swatch right here. That's right, I said a swatch. This is my very first swatch. I am quite proud of it because it's not just any swatch. Um, I did do a swatch for a project that I'm working on currently and I'll explain what happened to that swatch um, but that this red swatch here is actually uh, the yarn that I used for the lace work on this project that I'm about to show you so 
so this is it here. I'm going to sit back a little bit so you can see it. So this is it. Um, it is an asymmetrical shawl with um, swatches of lace work here. It's a little bit more prominent, you can see there. Um, and then the second set of lace. Are right to there. So, um, so what this is is this is my own knitwear. Uh, it's my own design. Um, so I wanted to know, you know, because I wanted to write it up and stuff like that. So I needed to know, you know, what your gauge needs to be so that you can get the proper measurements. And um, it uses two skeins of yarn, um, fingering weight. Uh, and I used, I think, a US-4 knitting needle for them. And while I am in the process of typing up the pattern, I actually need to sit down and probably re-knit the shawl um, because my math is off in what I wrote down um, versus what I should have gotten. So I need to re-knit this and see if my old math, what I wrote down was actually accurate versus what it should have been coming out mathematically, if that makes sense. So, um, with that, is this and this. So, this is a, a, a blue ribbon um, because I finished this up this year. I finished it up actually. I want to say at the beginning of July. I needed to sew in ends, but I had actually finished the actual knitting portion of itself this uh, June or July, something like that. But it was this year. And that was basically the only um, requirement when it came to entering an item into my county fair, was that the item had to have been made this year. So. Um, now, I started this back in 2017, and I think I showed the knit in uh, the project in progress, the whip for this, in a couple of previous episodes. I'm not exactly sure. It has been a very um, long project for me. Uh, but the funny thing is, is, I wasn't expecting to get entered into the expert level, but I did. Mind you, I've only been knitting for five years now, roughly, five and a half, almost six. And this is my very first knitwear design. Um, you know, I've come up with patterns for crochet and stuff like that, because I've been crocheting so much longer. Um, I've been actively crocheting since about uh, high school, which uh, I'd say probably my freshman year in high school. And that was in... 2004 was when I started my freshman year. So, you know, that's 15 years I've been crocheting. Um, so that's a considerable amount of time difference, even though I learned the basics, like um, the knot and the chain and the single crochet when I was nine. I never went beyond that. Um, I actually got very frustrated with it. So um, I didn't crochet after that one time and um, until I was uh, freshman in high school, um, and I crocheted a ton back in high school and stuff like that. Uh, so for me to be entered in the expert um, category at my local fair personally is very daunting to me because I don't think of myself as an expert. Like there's so many knitting techniques that I um, am mind boggled by like color work and brioche. Uh, those two big things I'm so nervous about that I haven't even attempted yet, even though I've set aside the yarn to make 
a very basic two color beanie with um, so that I can start moving into um, color work. Uh, I just haven't tried it yet. <laughs> Eventually I'll work up the gumption to do it, but right now, you know, I'm fine with just playing with lace and stuff like that. I still have so many mistakes when I knit that I, I think that's the real biggest reason. If I could work on a project from start to finish, somebody else's pattern, excuse me, hiccups, um, without making a mistake and having to frog back, um, then I think I would feel comfortable trying color work because I know tension is a big thing with color work. Um, so, but yeah. So, while I didn't necessarily place for the overall um, level, I did get the People's Choice Award. award. I got first place. The um, And this ribbon actually um, got my foot in the door to be judged for placement of the expert level. So, I was one of the ones selected. I just didn't quite get there. So that's super close, but I did win a ribbon and I'm, you know, it's my first time ever entering into an exhibit or entering an exhibit into my local fair. Um, so. I just, I'm very thankful that I did that. Um, and I got a write-up of what I need to do for next year, if I'm still here next year, or for any year, for that matter, when, uh, if I enter in, um, another knitted item into my local county fair. Because how awesome would it be to not only make first place in county, but then to get it entered into the state fair. That, that would be amazing. Ugh. If only there was a fair that was like countrywide. I think I'm getting ahead of myself and I just want all the ribbons and I'm getting a little greedy. But I think that's a little it. But, um, you know, right now I'm just, I'm happy with my first place People's Choice Award. So, um, and I, you know, it's funny because normally I hate being judged. Uh, I hate placing myself in a position where I'm going to be um, ranked against other people. Uh, so the fact that I entered it in and I wasn't nervous, like I got in my car after turning in my shawl, and I was like, wait, I don't have any anxiety. Hello? Anxiety? Are you there? Hello? Like I just, I, I was completely mind boggled and I got home and I was super excited and I told my husband and he was like good job honey I congratulations yay and I don't think he really understands how bad my anxiety can get sometimes um, I mean he's dealt with small doses of it but I don't think he's really because he wasn't trying to be patronizing or anything like that, you know, patting me on the head or anything like that. He was just... It didn't cross his mind to think that I might be anxious about it. So, it, he was very proud of me. Um, we actually still need to get pictures to uh, send to family members. Speaking of family members, I need to send a picture of this to my mom because she wanted to see pictures too. And I haven't done that yet. So, don't tell her because today's her birthday, technically. My next finished object and I have it here. It's made over here. Um, I'm not putting the whole set on the sock blockers yet because I've got um, another pair of socks going on. Actually, these are not mine. So my next two finished objects are these two pairs of socks. These are for me going into my sock drawer. And this one is a, um, I want to say Deborah Norton, no, it's a Patton Woolless Sock Yarn I picked up from Hobby Lobby. 
Um, I forget the color. I knit these at the beginning of the year, I want to say. And, um, yeah, I just haven't. Uh, I threw away the wrapper a long time ago. I've already got another ball in that, you know, um, in that bag, and uh, I've moved on to another pair of socks. Uh, I haven't started knitting those two pair of socks, but I have moved on. So that's one pair of finished socks for the year. And this pair of socks also for me, this is a Deborah Norton colorway. And I want to say it's a, the woodsy colorway. Don't quote me on that. Um, again, I got this at Hobby Lobby. Um, all of my socks are knit in the 52 stitch cast on um, with a 10 rows of 1x1 one one ribbing and a slip stitch heel flap and gusset, and then um, just knit to fit my foot. So that is the second pair of socks for the year finished. And then I have one more pair of finished socks for myself. And again, this is a Another one of the um, Patton's woolless um, sock yarn from Hobby Lobby. I want to say this is the Wildflowers colorway or some, something Wildflowers. Um, and it's just a self striping sock yarn that makes three. And then even my husband is getting a couple new pairs of socks this year. Um, this one is a Patton's Croy sock yarn. Um, I believe this is the gray marled sock yarn. It's a self striping sock yarn. Um, this is, I want to say, 64 stitches knit on a US 2 or one, one and a half. One and a half um, with 10 rows of one by one ribbing the heel flap and gusset, um, and then just knit down the foot to fit his, fit him. So that's a fourth pair of socks for the year. And then this guy here, this one, and here's its mate, um, is a gradient sock blank uh, that I got from a uh, from Northwest Yarns up in Bellingham, and it is so the yarn was dyed by Huckleberry Yarns. It's a local dyer here, and I forget what the colorway was, but it gradiates from this real pale blue all the way to it was a really dark brown. Um, so it went blue, green into brown, um, and these are all. It's just a all. Of the socks that I've knit are vanilla socks. There's no patterns that I've knit this year, um, though that is something I want to do. I just haven't gotten that far. Um, I've had some baby knits on the mind and I just have been starting all of the projects and not really getting a whole lot done. So those are all of the... I take that I have one in this bag because it's a tiny knit. Yep, and all the other socks that I knit in this size. <laughs> These are my baby socks. I think I've knit this is like the sixth or seventh pair that I've knit. Um, and these are for my girls. Um, my goal is to knit enough socks to get them through a month. So I need 60 pairs of socks. <laughs> Um, not like I can keep socks on my daughters. Uh, in fact, footed pants are the best because it keeps their toes warm, keeps those feet warm, and they don't get kicked off. So, um, but I'm hoping because their little feet go about 
here so I'm hoping that by this fall when it gets really cold and they need to start wearing um, socks that these will stay on a little bit better um, so uh, this is uh, it's a free pattern I got off of Ravelry like easy baby socks or something like that it's just um, again it is a free pattern so it's just a bunch of ribbing a tiny little baby heel flap and then um, knit down the foot for I think 15 rows and then you do your decreases um, so I've like I said I think I've knit like seven or eight pairs of baby socks um, I would have to grab them for sure to see how many I've knit completely so yeah there's those uh, the yarn is some patterns raw yarn left over from the pair of socks I knit my husband. Um, so all of their socks I have been knitting out of ends and leftover bits. So I think I have enough yarn here for one more pair of socks. I'm not sure. I may just save this and use it as um, ends for yarn. And then the knitting needles I'm using are US size ones. I want to say. Yeah, they're US ones. So, um, yeah. And I'll actually show you what all is in the bag in a little bit because that is uh, a work in progress. Something else I've done. I've been sitting at my spinning wheel. Well, my goal was to spin a hank of yarn or a skein of yarn um, or to spin um, a collection of fiber that I bought, you know, whether it be a braid or a bat or a set of roll legs or something of that nature. Um, you know, spin one of those up into a skein every two months. And I was really doing that really good. Uh, in fact, I've got a third. This is this. This was the second one I did. I have a, the first one is put away. I didn't want to dig it out, um, so this is actually the second one. I don't know how much I got out of this. Um, the braid I got at Northwest Fibers up in Bellingham, and I do know that there's some merino and some silk and some other stuff in here. Um, I am just starting to learn spinning and stuff like that. I don't do it consistently. Um, this is kind of in between a fingering and a sport weight yarn. Uh, in fact, I just found my measurement, my wooden measurement piece to be able to measure how thick the yarn is to know for sure. Um, I do have a Nitty Naughty. I have a one yard Nitty Naughty. This has also not been set either. So that's another issue. So um, I do need to soak this and set the twist. But uh, I'm really quite proud because this, you know, I had this done by April, like I had planned to, and I had started spinning on the next one in May, and then I gave birth, and I haven't spun really hardly anything since then. I think I spent a couple of nights spinning since the girls have been born, um, but I just. I have so many projects I want to work on that I don't have enough hours in the day, especially now that the girls are here, and I do go back to work very soon, and there will literally be no hours in the day because they just changed our work hours, so, yeah. Um, so with that said, it's, you know, I just do the best I can when I can, so, yeah. It's, it's this really pretty, um, Tonal goes from um, kind of a dark, dusty gray to a turquoisey color and silver. It's really pretty. So there's that guy. And then I have one more finished object, but it is not fiber related. Um, you will have actually, by the time you see this episode of my podcast, the um, video where I showed you how I made this 
will all already have been up, so you can definitely go and check that out. This is a uh, resin heart-shaped trinket box, so there you can see the shape, and it is two pieces that open up, and then I painted the lid to look like a horse face, kind of, and then out of clay I used, I made um, the horse's ears and the unicorn and tried to make this into a magical unicorn trinket box. Not bad for uh, someone who really isn't a painter or draw or drawing or anything like that. Um, and this is my first time playing with resin. Um, I do get a subscription box from Sophie and Toffee, so you'll definitely be seeing more videos from them of me opening up those boxes and doing the projects and things like that. So um, if there's not a um, podcast episode, there will definitely be a different kind of crafting video um, when it comes into regards of that. Uh, I'm kind of moving away from this being just a fiber channel um, because I do so many other crafts and I think I kind of started to explain that in my last episode. Um, but I didn't really go into a whole lot of depth of that because I want to, there's so many crafts I want to try and so many things I want to show you guys how to do. Um, you know, I'm not just a fiber crafter. Um, I do other things too. This room is uh, quite large and there's a lot of other uh, crafts in here that I like to play with. So, but yeah, that I believe is all of my finished objects. I'm going to go ahead and move into my whips, which is what this podcast is all about. So for my first whip, I actually need to sew on the ends now. Um, is this triangular shawl. This is made out of Madeline Tosh in her Moreno light. It's her singles fingering base and I believe the color was foliage. Um, I got it as a set and it came with this mini skein um, and I've knit this to the um, tiny tassels pattern. Uh, I forget who it's by, but I got it when I purchased the yarn for this. And um, they had it on display and I thought it was really pretty. So I thought that I would make this up for my mother-in-law for Mother's Day. And of course it's beyond then and I haven't um, finished it. There's not enough hours in the day. so. Um, but it is the next thing I'm going to be finishing up here shortly. At least that's the plan. Um, so it's to get these turned into little tassels and attached to the shawl so she can be wearing this for at least this fall. So that is my first whip. My next whip is right here and it is in fact another pair of socks that I started. It's just the first sock um, out of this yarn here which is by it's not old rusted chair Desert Vista Dye Works and this is the Snow White and the Seven Zombodies colorway um, I have a pair of socks that I knit myself out of this and I have enough here to knit each of the girls a pair of socks out of this so we'll be all matchy in our little cute pairs of socks so that won't take me long. This is actually my purse knitting. I keep this bag inside my purse and so anytime I'm sitting in the car or we're waiting for something or something like that, I just pull that project out. So um, I'm constantly, you know, working on those. And then my final whip that I'm going to show you here is in this bag. This is by Earl Grey Fibers Co. Um, it's one of those cork bottom this bag, um, this portion of the bag here is like cork fiber or cork fabric, and then it's this beautiful woodland fairies print up top, and it is a, a uh, cinch. Oh, hiccups! Goodness, it is a cinch bag, and I got this at a Revolution Fibers. 
don't quote me on that, that it's a festival they just started doing. They had the second one this last year, um, and they're doing it again this year because it was so successful. So, uh, yeah. Um, and it's going to be happening in November this year, so I'm really excited to go back because I just, I got my hands on so many new yarns and fibers and stuff like that this last the last time I actually got two project bags and I can't seem to find that second project pack and it's really bugging me that I can't find it but uh, and inside this project bag is let me turn it so that it's the right way so this is the f oh that's the back this is the front here um, I'm about 25% of the way finished with it um, and this is so this is uh, the first pattern of the Shawl Society's um, season four by Helen Stewart or Curiously Handmade online um, and this particular shawl is called the Sea Glam Shawl and it looks like that uh, and then the yarn I am knitting this out of is actually my own yarn. Um, this is it here. Because it does call for like 800 yards, so I decided I was going to start knitting um, samples with my yarn. So that if I ever go to a show, I have some pieces to display. Um, and this is my dragon base, so it is my 75-25 and uh, merino nylon fingering white yarn and the this particular color is called funny face it's just this nice rich medium tone um, pink showing up a lot more fluorescent on camera um, than it is in person so this is a lot more it's not quite this fluorescent at least so um, and then I'm just knitting it on the instructions that the pattern calls for because I got gauge. Um, I start, I made the swatch, made sure I got gauge. It didn't get blocked, but you know I spread it out as if I were, if it's as if it were swatched or blocked. And uh, like I said, got gauge with the recommended knitting needles, and I'm using Chiaogu's red lace needles for this. And uh, I've ripped this out quite a few times. Um, in fact, I think I've ripped this out two times now, and I've had to frog back a few rows a couple of times. So, um, yeah, one day I'll get finished, and I'll show you the finished object. But that day is not today. So, that completes all of my whips in progress. So, I have one acquisition I can show you guys um, that is craft related. All the other stuff that I've bought, you know, recently has been put away. I've been in this major like cleaning and reorganizing um, of my craft room since um, I've been on maternity leave. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done around here. Like you can see I still have my sewing machines on top of the sewing machine box. One of those is actually supposed to be mounted that one that's right here is supposed to actually be mounted inside the cabinet I have not gone that far I'm working on it because there's a lot of stuff in front of the, that cabinet can't even get it open right now my it's my issue but yeah so all right and for acquisition acquisition can't even say the word acquisitions I have one item and it is this guy I got it at my local Goodwill or uh, thrift store, um, and this is one of the Bucilla um, Christmas stocking kits, and I got this actually for my husband. Um, I want to go on Amazon and see if I can get some. Now I have actually gone on to the Bucilla site itself, and they do have Halloween and Thanksgiving ones. Um, these kits normally go anywhere from 15 I've seen them upwards of $35, um, 
Um, they've got one that is a um, advent calendar. Anyways, they have one that's an advent calendar, and I think that's the one that's the most expensive, um, which would be really fun for the girls, but I have yet to get to make it for them. So what it is basically is it's a felt craft kit that comes with all of the embroidery floss and the beads and the sequins that you need to make this. So I think I'm going to make this for my husband. Um, and this is the Playful Bells Felt Stocking. It's an 18 inches diagonally. So when it's done. Um, I have one that I've been working on for my friend. And I have not worked on that in a really long time. That is also a whip. And when I actually get some work on it, I will show you some updated progress. Because I think I've been showing that video. Those have been showing it in previous episodes. I'm not quite positive. But I started working on that at the end of, way before Christmas last year. I want to say in 2017 is when I ordered them. Yeah, that sounds about right. And I didn't get them done in time uh, for our little Christmas celebration, so. Um, but other than that, that's everything I have to show you guys. Um, I will be eventually having a big opening for my storefront for yarn that I'm dyeing myself. It will also include some project bags that I've sewn up and um, stitch markers and stuff like that. Uh, so when I'm fully ready to launch my shop, I will be doing a shop announcement. Um, but right now everything's kind of in the air. My job is thinking about sending me somewhere else to um, work to another location. Um, if that happens, we're really hoping for Florida. Um, I will find out about the middle of this month, if that's the case, at the earliest. Um, and then the next time that I might find out would be the time that they would officially put it out, um, would be September. Um, so that should... I should have that information, fingers crossed, by the next podcast, because it's looking like I'm going to try and podcast as little more regularly as possible, if I can. Um, again, I do have so many ideas of videos I want to create for you guys. Uh, yeah, so if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. That definitely tells me that you liked it. Um, and subscribing will let you know when I have uploaded new videos and if you want a notification when I've uploaded a new video because I'm not just going to be posting podcast videos, I'm going to be uploading other craftiness, um, hitting that notification bell will definitely do that. So until next time guys, thank you for joining me um, in my crafty journey and until next time, 